season in Forza Horizon 5 is officially here. And today we get to unlock one of my favorite cars coming out this month. This is the Hyundai Kona N. All we need to do to unlock the thing is get 20 points. So it should be really easy to unlock. I'm very excited to check out the customization for it. We'll see if it's any good. Oh, hello, Ferrari. Funny timing that we get two Ferraris in the festival playlist today. Our final challenge, all we need to do is turn up to the drift arena oh my god we need to bring the kona n over here this area looks insane with that we have done it these things have an incredible little exhaust system that does pops and bangs pops and bangs are just Cool, okay. Nathan says, dude, I'm a proper child. When I'm miserable, I go for a drive and it makes me grin. You just unintentionally brought up a fun fact. You know how when this car was announced last week, I told you about its boost button. On the steering wheel of the Hyundai Kona N, there is a button that says NGS on it. When you press that button, you get 10 extra horsepower for 20 seconds. It's a very cool thing. It's an absolute meme, but it's actually pretty cool. Everybody in the Hyundai office they had a day off when they decided to come up with the acronym for the button. NGS stands for N being the back of the car, G grin, and S shift. It's called the N grin shift button. It's the most stupid name for a button. I have no idea why they called it that, but they did, and it's very confusing. Hyundai makes a bunch of different Konas. This one, being the N1, is the best version, the most powerful version. But again, what's kind of weird about it, you can buy the regular Kona in front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, but you can only buy the fast one in front-wheel drive, which is, again, really strange. Usually, it's the opposite. They did actually fit the thing with a limited slip diff, so even though it is front wheel drive, it is actually really quick and able to take corners. And now I know what you're probably saying. Why do you like this weird Korean crossover? I don't think you can actually classify this as a crossover, but does anybody else think it's just kind of like a fat hatchback? It's only an inch higher off the ground than a Toyota Camry. Nobody's looking at a Camry going, oh yeah, that's a crossover. And the fact that it comes with things like a limited slip diff and front wheel drive and has pop and bangs. I think it's just a fat hatchback. <laughs> Here in Canada, we don't actually have like the i30 or the i20. And the Veloster is still lopsided, which means I refuse to buy one because my OCD can't bear with that. Therefore, this is the best Hyundai for sale in Canada. Here's what I would do to it if I bought one. Upgrade the suspension, give it some coilovers to bring it down. I think that looks incredible. I'd also go and get a big fat air filter. And I'd also go and get a big fat exhaust. And then suddenly you've got 305 horsepower and a sick looking car. Let's check out the engine swaps. I think we should build this thing into like an A-class car. Ooh, ooh, no. All we get is a 1.6 turbo rally. I mean, it's a good engine, but I was really hoping for like a little V6 in this thing would have been insane. Anyways, it will be a really good rally car. We'll come back to that engine. Let's work on the stock engine for now. And you know what? Why don't I go and make it all-wheel drive? I'm essentially going to turn this into a Subaru, actually, now that I've just said that. Why don't I go and build like a try-hard build? Let's go with rally tires for this thing. Let's get some engine spacers. Not bad. As usual, I would have preferred an extra inch or two, but let's be honest, who wouldn't? Let's upgrade the drivetrain. We've already got a six-speed gearbox. Upgrade the drive shaft. Upgrade the differential. We'll upgrade the brakes, racing brakes. We've already got our race suspension. Give it some anti-roll bars. Oh, this is sick. I'm gonna do full race weight reduction. I'm essentially turning this thing into a track car. I just need to find the upgrade that's gonna get me... Top of A class. Beautiful. 400 horsepower, 2,800 pounds. I think this is pretty good. I want to do a quick little poll while I'm painting the car. Do you like this car? Yes or no? I really like this thing. I think it's just cool. It's different. I really like what Hyundai is doing these days between all of their cool N cars and their concept cars are just mind-blowing. Also, I really like this silver. 83% of the AR12 viewer base likes this car. All right, let me just paint the roof black and we'll be ready. 
Wait, I've just noticed. Wait, there's no sunroof on the Kona? I love the look of this car. Anyway, let's see if it's any... I forgot we did anti-lag. The anti-lag might be a little excessive, okay? I don't know if you guys ever played this game in school, but when I was in high school, my friends and I would have wannabe top gear challenges where we would set ourselves like a budget and like a criteria for cars to find. When we did the hot hatch challenge, I always came up with two answers. The VW Golf GTI. I ended up buying an R32. And I always ended up coming up with a Hyundai Veloster. Veloster was always second place because it was lopsided. And I don't know why they've decided to put two doors on one side and one door on the other side. It bothers me to no end. With our all-wheel drive swap, it's just a beast in the corners. What an insane little car. I really did build it into like an OP little racer. Look at it. We're leaving everything behind. Not only does it look really cool, but it's also really fast. 360 across the line. What a car. Okay, that was really good. Really promising. What do we think about taking this thing off-road? But why don't I turn it into like a snow off-roader? I think all I'm gonna do in that case then, instead of going with like the off-road race, the rally tires, we are going studded snow tires. I think the only other upgrade we're gonna need to do is just give it rally suspension. Now it looks more like a crossover. More power a lot more power. Somebody says, fun fact, the Kona was designed by the same guy who designed the Mercy Lago. Sorry, Mercy Lago. My favorite car of all time is the Mercy LP670. Maybe that's why I like this so much. It's all starting to make a lot more sense. Anyways, let's give it a go. Winter rally driving special. Got some good bite. Got some very good bite. Look at its size compared to all of these big SUVs like Maserati Levante is just like double the size. What a car. It's so nice to... Why are my studded snow tires not working? Chat, are studded snow tires in this game actually like good? Golden says the snow tires are trash. Wait, everyone says I should have taken off-road right... Wait, are the snow tires just a waste of time then? I thought we were being more authentic by taking snow tires. The Kona N has a lap timer in the middle? Are you kidding me? This car is the car that just keeps getting better and better. Zooming past all of the AI even with my inferior snow tires and across the line. I've got to assume you can get more horsepower from the turbo rally engine. Then I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just, we're just gonna play the game like this. I guess I need my race suspension back. There we go. 500 horsepower. Remove the restrictor plate. 700 horsepower from the Kona. Somebody in chat really had the audacity to say Nick has bad taste in color. Bro, it looks awesome like this. Anyway, let's see what it can do with as much horsepower fully maxed out. Apparently, the Jag didn't appreciate my vehicle. Send it and go. Oh my god, the rally engine is gonna bake some pop. For now, though, it's all flat. Ready? Rally engines do have their advantages. Does anybody in real life actually race like a Kona N? Like, has anybody converted a Kona N into a race car? Whether it be for, like track driving or rally racing. I guess if you were doing the rally route, you'd probably want to start with a regular Kona instead of the end so you could get all-wheel drive. There are really people out there who say that they don't like the anti-lag in this game. I would like to ask those people if they're okay. Watch out for the Porsche. Watch out for the big boys. Every single challenge we've thrown at it, it's managed to not only just complete it, but nail it. Another P1. The game's not going to tell me I had a skill issue in this thing. Now we have arguably the hardest challenge of all. Can you drift a Kona N? I guess we'll keep our turbo rally engine in there just because pops and bangs are cool. We're going to definitely get rid of the rear wing. We're going to give it some drifting tires now. We're going to go rear wheel drive for this thing just to change it up a little bit. I think the only other thing we need is just drift suspension. Oh my god. Look at the dragon in the sky. What the? I guess there is like a sort of mini layout here. Unfortunately, there's no like drift zone, which is kind of disappointing, but I get it. You can actually have like a really nice little drift competition here 
hit your outside clipping point, then come in, try to aim for an inside clipping point, hold it if you can. Where are these little shooty up flame thingies though? That's what I want. Oh, there, there, there. Look at them. Oh, that's cool. It would have been nice if you had to get a little closer to them. I think I think this distance might be a little far, but very cool. Uh Forza Horizon 5 really is that game now. 360 the Kona into the corner. I like it. You know the sad thing? There's really people out there who don't like this car. Oh, what an awesome little car. Next week, we actually get not one, but two new cars. If you like hot hatches, you might like the Lincoln Co. O2. And we also have the Ionic 6, which I'm not the biggest fan of. But we'll talk about that next time.